Hello and welcome back to Mark's Garden UK at Rose Cottage where we're into June so it's time for the June update. Although you wouldn't think it was June I've still got my thick coat on I actually think the weather this year has been pretty poor so far. And here comes Simba to join me and let's start off with the parterre. The parterre is doing incredibly well. These wonderful little box plants which I bought from Hedges Direct are all starting to knit together and produce a lovely hedge. It won't be long before you can't see individual plants. I'll probably give this a trim in about two weeks time. You're supposed to trim box plants around Derby Day, which is the end of May, early June. We've just had Derby Day, so these are ready for a very small trim. Not too much because they're very young plants. Now I want to create a bit of a South African vibe in this garden at the front of the cottage. It's south facing. I've added some Agapanthus here in pots. One of them has already got a bloom on it, but don't be fooled because that bloom is left over from last year. It survived the winter and decided to open, but we do already have signs of blooms coming through. This one in particular, I think I've counted about seven on it. So soon, probably in about a month's time, this will be a wash of lovely big globe shaped flowers. I've also added some bird of paradise plants to this garden to add to that South African vibe. Over there to my right, two different types of bird of paradise, Strelitzia regina and Strelitzia nicolai. Nicolai is a giant bird of paradise. And down there, just at the front of the camera, there was a patch of bare earth. I was going to plant three hydrangea annabelle in there, but I realized it was quite exposed. The wind comes through here and I don't think the hydrangea annabelle like all that wind so i've decided to find another project for those and i've seeded that patch of bare earth there and it started to germinate so hopefully by the july update that will be a fully green lawn now a couple of months ago you saw me plant the exotic border at the front with trachycarpus fortunii and these have now really settled in and found the feet i'm very pleased with this border i put it here because i can see it from the kitchen window but just look at this flower here bright yellow three on this one and these plants are what's known as dioecious, which means that you have a male plant and a female plant. The male one has yellow flowers, and this is obviously a male. I know that that one there is yellow, so that's obviously a male too. This one at the back has never flowered, hopefully. It will have green flowers, and I'll have a male and a female, and they may even propagate. So there's the Trachycarpus fortunii. And I know in the last update I was talking about putting in a scented border along this path from the kitchen door to the rear of the cottage and now I've planted that in. I've used lollipop olive trees for height. I've got rosemary, lavender and thyme. I've planted the thyme quite close to the edge so that when you walk past and you brush it you'll get those lovely scents. When I planted the parterre I had 12 box plants left over so I've divided that by three and I've put little groups of four so there's three groups of four here I'm going to let them grow up together and I'm going to trim them into nice neat cubes so that will add year-round structure in this lovely long scented border at the side of the cottage. And as you'll know if you've been watching my videos I'm going to add a fence along this line here which will divide the scented border from the garden at the rear of the cottage. And these are the four bamboos which I planted in and these are to form a screen across here with a gateway through the centre. I've buried those in the ground in pots because they are very invasive and I don't want them popping up all over the place so the pots will help to contain them. I was a little bit worried about this one on my left because all the leaves dried up and it went yellow but fortunately all those dead leaves just dropped off and they've been replaced by lots of lovely fresh green leaves and all but one of these has now got new spikes coming up out of the ground so hopefully over the course of this year they will continue to bush out and form a nice hedge or screen across here with a gap between. That gap will lead you through into the tropical border which I've now planted up and I've chosen this area of the garden for my tropical border because it's south and east facing so it has a lot of good light and on a sunny day it's bathed in sunlight and so the plants i've put in here will enjoy that sunlight i've got lots of cannas musa badjadu the green banana over there some craniums this lovely big specimen red banana and sete marillii i've got some palms and some colocaceous and when these went in about three weeks ago they were nothing and already they're showing signs of great growth there's a little ginger plant here which i thought was actually dead it's now got three lovely spikes and that will 
grow quite tall and have some lovely flowers on it. So that's the tropical border now planted and that leads us through to the jungle garden in the shady, damp, sheltered area at the very rear of the cottage. And unlike the tropical border, this area of the garden is almost always in the shade. So it's the perfect and ideal location for ferns and hostas and other shade loving plants. You can see beneath my feet, there's a round area of hardcore or rubble and that's going to have a patio put on top of it. I've already got the patio just down there waiting in the wings. And then all around the outside, we're going to plant our ferns and our hostas, our arum lilies, our tree ferns. And that's going to be a lovely shaded green, lush, cool area in the hot summer months. So a little recap. I've got my formal parterre at the front of the cottage with a South African vibe created with agapanthus and Strelitzia, bird of paradise. Then I've got my exotic tropical border with the Trachycarpus sportunii. I've got my lovely scented border coming up the side of the cottage. Behind me is a jungle zone coming together and I've got my exotic tropical border. So things are all coming together and progressing. Now let me show you my miniature veg plot at the rear of the garage, which I'm quite excited about. And here it is. And this is a garden which I've created very economically. I think I've spent six pounds in total, three pounds on some compost and three pounds on some seeds. These were two large planters which I cut in two and I've put on the ground as raised bed. I filled them with soil and put some compost on top. I made a little cold frame here out of some bricks and a perspex sheet. And then over there, I've got my Hugo culture bulk bag raised beds. That's got garden waste at the bottom and soil on the top. And the idea is that the garden waste eventually will feed the soil. About two weeks ago, I sowed a selection of seeds in here, £2.97 for three packets of seeds from Aldi. So I've got things like beetroots and carrots and lettuce, little gem radish and spring onion, a selection of herbs and tomato and cucumber in the coal frame. And over there in the Hugo culture bulk bag raised beds, I've got cauliflower, cabbage, sprouts, onions, garlic, chives, dill, parsley and chives. So a great selection. This is a little bit of an experiment to see how much value I can get from those £2.97 seeds. I'm going to tot it all up and see how much value I get from it. So that's my miniature raised veg plot. And happily I can report that every single one of those seeds is germinated. Let's see how we get on with that. These two barrels, by the way, a subscriber gave me an idea. I'm going to turn these into bug hotels. I'm going to pack them with canes and sticks and put them in the wildlife garden, which is where we're going next. And so here we are now in the wildlife garden. I've allocated this whole corner of my garden to wildlife. And you can see I've marked out the wildlife pond and I've started digging the pond. It's going to be six meters across from here, right the way over to over here. And it's going to have three different depths, three foot, two foot, one foot, and that's to accommodate different types of plants. I've already got a wildlife log pile here, a hibernaculum at the back, buddleia butterfly bushes, a stick and twig pile there to encourage different types of invertebrates. And along here, I sold a wildlife meadow. I'm incredibly pleased with this because this was a one pound 50 bag of seeds. It had about 25 different varieties and just look at it. It's really taken off. We've even got some flowers at the top of some of these plants already. And I always said, if it did well, I would give Aldi some credit because again, £1.50 bag of seeds from Aldi and just look at the results. So I will continue digging by hand the wildlife pond. I'm going to see how far I get. I'm going to do it daily in small chunks and hopefully by next month's update, we should have the formation of a lovely big wildlife pond here. The grass and the turf is going over there in a mound and a lot, if there's good topsoil, a lot of it will go in that direction where I'm going to create some raised beds for my vegetables as I bring them on from the miniature veg plot at the rear of the garage. So that's the wildlife garden taken care of. Let me show you another little project. And so this is in the corner of the garden where all the rubbish and the rubble seems to gravitate towards there's a gate over here and that's where I'll have a skip delivered eventually but if you remember there was a raised bed here around the base of this apple tree and I made the decision as it had to go I didn't really care for it very much 
so I've started to dismantle it. There are some nice flowers and plants in there which I'm going to save. For example, there's an iris and a cornflower just over there, and they'll go in the direction of the wildflower meadow. But eventually this whole area will be cleared, and that will leave me a section of garden here, which I can see from the kitchen window, which I've not thought about the full design yet, but I'm thinking of having a kind of a, a utopiary garden here. But that's for another day and another video and requires quite a bit more thought. So there we are, an update and a summary of all the little projects that I've got going on at Mark's Garden UK at Rose Cottage near Nantwich in Cheshire. This, by the way, is my lawn, which I've left a large part of it unmown for no mow may. And the results have been quite extraordinary. Hundreds of little plants have grown up out of the grass. I didn't even know were there. And I've noticed lots of birds going into this long grass, probably, to enjoy the grass seed because, look, seed heads. You just don't get that when you mow your lawn. And I'm sure those birds are going in there and enjoying all those little seeds. Again, the clover. If you allow it to grow, it's full of sweet nectar for lots of different bee species. So, no mow may is going to continue for me into no mow June, just for this area. But I will keep this path up the middle, mown. It's a lovely little feature. It goes from the cottage to the wildlife garden. It kind of draws your eye through. So I will keep that, but I will leave this bit unmown. So I hope you've enjoyed that little update. If you have, don't forget to like the video. And of course, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so that you find out when my next video is published. And of course, I know that I've got subscribers in all corners of the globe, and it's always wonderful to hear from you. So don't forget to comment in the comments box below. And I'll see you soon.